Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 54 of the American Muslim Experience. My name is Zaki Hassan, and with me once again is my friend Pervez Ahmed. Hey, Zaki. Thanks. Good to be here. Good to be back. And what's been going on in your life? Anything? I know we talked about your 20th uh, high school reunion. Uh, well, no, no reunions have happened since, since my, then, my okay. 20th, okay. so uh, counting down till my 21st, I guess. Um, but this, this is a momentous. We are recording in... A momentous location. We are. So we are at Zaytuna College, although we've had, you know, Imam Zaid on and we've had others on, but we've never actually recorded at Zaytuna College. We've been Zaytuna adjacent. That's right. That's a few right. episodes here and there. And tangentially connected in so many ways. Yeah. But here we are in, in the, in the, uh, what is we're, it? we're sitting atop Holy Hill. Yes. That's that's a name. I just you just told me that uh, on the it, car right here. That's right, exactly. Uh, so here in Berkeley, and California. perhaps today's guest can tell us a little bit about Holy Hill and where well, we find ourselves. Well, our guest is Imam Dawood Yassin, who is Dean of Student Life and Experiential Learning here at Zaytuna College. During his residence in South Africa, Imam Dawood converted to Islam and then spent five years in Damascus studying Arabic, Islam, and spirituality. And upon completion of his studies, he relocated to New Haven, Connecticut, where he served as Imam of Masjid Al Islam. And while in New Haven, he also worked as a teaching assistant and engaged in research at Yale University. He also served as director of outreach at the Zayed Center for Islamic Culture in the UAE, engaging in public speaking and abroad and emphasizing ethics and tolerance between Muslim and non-Muslim communities. And he spent five summers teaching Arabic language at the Zaytuna Summer Arabic Intensive, having worked with colleagues to establish learning outside of the classroom a program at Zaytuna College, which includes service learning trips and a revival of traditional Athletics found in swimming, archery, and horseback riding. Imam Daoud, thank you so much for coming on to Fusing Congruence. Marcella, thank you for having me. It's great, great to have you. So, I mean, that's quite the the, the bio, and we kind of I know went through it and what uh, knocked it out in twenty seconds. But uh, it's like talking about someone's forty year journey. I'm, I'm, I'm aging you. Please excuse me if I if, if I'm over. You're being generous. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you don't look a day over thirty, so it's hard to say. Um, but yeah, so please, uh, you know, as we often like to ask on the show, uh, the origin story. Yeah. Yeah, please tell us. I know you have a very rich and uh, fascinating background, so I'd love to hear a little bit about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, we, uh, my family, we are from, uh, from Nantucket, Massachusetts, um, is where kind of I trace my, my roots to on this side of the Atlantic anyway. Yeah. Um, prior to that, my family, ethnically, we are Cape Verdean. We're from the Cape Verde Islands, uh, which is off the uh, coast of Senegal, uh, an archipelago of ten, 10 islands, both of my, my mother and father, um, both of their uh, families are, 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 are from there. Um, we, what we understand, my great-grandfather arrived about 1894, uh, and, and we've been in Massachusetts ever since that time. Mm -hmm. um, so I was born there. Um, your great grandfather, you said, arrived. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. When you say arrive, I mean, he, yeah. he, yeah, he was part of the transatlantic slave route, or no, he came no. independently. He came independently oh. on 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 what we understand documented right. uh, um, on the last remnants of the whaling ships that were coming uh, that were coming across from there. Yeah. Right. So so that's that's where that's where we kind of you know kind of you know have our Plymouth Rock moment. Yeah. <laughs> In right. Massachusetts, not yeah. too far from where I grew up. Big whaling um, community. Big whaling yeah. community. Yeah. Uh, there's, yeah. There's a museum, I think, dedicated to that. There well, is. On Nantucket there is. Island. I've been in Nantucket. Oh, you yeah. have? I lived in Western Mass for about that's a year. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We yeah. didn't talk about it. Yeah. Been, uh, have you been there since it's been no, renovated? No, no. uh, I'm sorry, re renovated? No, oh, no, it's, no it's fantastic. Right. I, I took the kids there. Uh, we went there a couple summers ago. Or, wow. But uh, yeah, nice, nice place. And actually, I have a friend who's really interesting, a young kid that we, we grew up with. He actually, he actually DJs like hip hop and house music on the roof of the Wang Museum in Nantucket, which I think is odd. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyway. But, it's a very like yeah. sort of white picket fences, <laughs> oh, you know, uh, yeah. everything you'd imagine New England yeah. or Nantucket Island to be, I should say. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes. yeah, that you know, grew, grew up there. Um, went to you know, went to Academy Hill Elementary School, which was great. Just just beautiful, massive brick brick building. I loved going back to visit, mm. and we were there. Um, 
you know, spent my time there. I spent high school there, which was really interesting. I think it was a really great educational, um, there were great educational opportunities there, but I just didn't take advantage of them. So it was kind of like that quintessential, like, mm. I'm just going to play sports and, and be like cool and like not do my homework and not do my readings. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, and, and so that was me kind of growing up, uh, played football and basketball growing up and, you know, didn't really know what to do about college. Um, first gen college and siblings uh that i grew up with um you know didn't 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 uh too attempted and, and didn't didn't, didn't okay. complete um so so it was you i said I first knew, generation in your family yeah, yeah, my family. yeah, yeah. Okay. so so i think that um you know it was really interesting because i knew i wanted to go and i had cousins older cousins i'm i'm 17 of 18 first cousins uh, so, so I had other cousins that have been, and right. and um, you know, and um, but in terms of like what was happening in my house, it wasn't like this path, like hey, this is what's going to happen, right? right? You're, you're dealing with, um, you know, um, how do you take SATs and you know all of these things. So anyway, I, I watched a lot of people like go to college and just like have this meltdown where they couldn't deal with living off of the island. There's these things called traffic lights, which we don't have on the <laughs> island. And there are like three-story buildings because you can only have two stories on the, you know, where we grew up. So oh. I just think big city life, you yeah. know, right. in like Worcester, Mass, was causing people to melt down or something like this. So anyway, I want to get as far away as I can. So I actually went to a junior college okay. in Riverside, California. Wow. That's where I started. You went on the other side of the coast. Well, the other side of the coast. Yeah. Got or totally... The other side you know, of the country. Sorry, the other coast, I should say. Yeah. We, you know, I'm cool with, like, hurricanes yeah. where we grew up, yeah. but I'm not cool with earthquakes. So, like, that Whittier quake, I like, you know, mm-hmm. freaked me out. I was like, I'm out of here, you know, <laughs> right. finished out the school year and headed back to, to Massachusetts. Okay. And then just, you know, went to went to, went to to school in, in Connecticut and then, you know, Got a gig in, 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 in the fashion world and, and did that for five years. and So, okay. So, I had heard that through the rumor. Kind yeah, of yeah. So, it's true. It is true. I don't know if it, I mean, you don't have to <laughs> delve into it if you don't want to, but yeah, you did was, walk the catwalk. I did walk the catwalk. Did they, they call did. it the catwalk? Even if it's, they, did. Know, they did. They did. Yeah, so. they did. They call it the catwalk. It's gender... I don't want to say Rick. neutral, but it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not yeah, it's not gender specific. <laughs> well, I guess neither is cat, although we do, do tend to associate cats with feminine. feminine yeah, 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 like yeah. Cats are... <laughs> oh, or, or, or you could take Malcolm X's. Somebody's going to be a cool cat. Exactly, I was oh, going to say. Hey, that, hey, hey, hey daddy-o, yeah. let me come over here and tug on those coattails yeah. and get in the cat's ear. You know, that's what he said to uh, Elijah Muhammad or something. That's great. <laughs> you know, so, uh, uh, so the story goes. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about a cat. Yeah. Let, me t- let me tug on those coattails and tell you about a cat. Right. Uh, so, so, uh, right. yeah. Um, yeah, so that was, that was, yeah, I did that for okay. a while. That was cool. I got to, I got, it was kind of, I, I didn't have to join the military to, to be able to see the world, right? So I got to, you know, I lived in Europe for a while, I lived in Paris and London and Iran and, wow. you know, Germany and Japan and finally ended up in South Africa. Um, and then in South Africa, that's where I, that's where, where I, uh, I was in Cape Town. Cape Town. Okay. Yeah, I was in Cape Town. I was living in London at the time. Yeah. Uh, an agency would come in and be like, hey, we would think that, you know, South Africa will be a great, you know, um, uh, place for you to be able to work. I, you know, it's really interesting because I, I always take like, you know, Charlie Murphy, you know, uh, when, when, he, when, he was telling, when he said, you know, you know, he said, you know, um, talking about the success of, of, of Wesley Stipes and he would always reference, he said that was before Passenger 57 or whatever the movie was, right? Yeah, so they really hadn't had that breakthrough yet, uh, people of color, the way mm-hmm. that they did. So I was kind of in that, I was in the, I was in the early 90s in the game and there was gotcha. only a handful of us that were modeling at that time. Huh. Um, um, and, and, and so, yeah, so some Africa was a market now that all of a sudden a person of color could actually brother could get some work. <laughs> so so I went to South Africa and ended up and ended up converting in, in, in while well, I was in South Africa. Wow. What I mean? Yeah. So I I, I, had, I hate that question of like yeah. well, but because it, it's an event. I mean, it's not an event; it's a process. But yeah, any kind of like where was it a community? Was it a yeah a charismatic you know, figure? You know, I, you know. I think it was a combination of okay. both. It was it definitely was two charismatic figures three if you count Malcolm is reading his autobiography when I was in college Rahimullah yeah. uh, but 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 um, my cousin had converted in the 70s okay uh, an older cousin uh, Mario who is now Isa <laughs> and uh, and just watching his life you know change we, we, you know we were very close it, we are still yeah. very close to this day but just watching his life transform at a young age for me was like I was like that's yeah. I like that man. Right. I like that. And then and then Imam Zaid Shaker. 
Imam Zaid Shaker yeah. was my professor at Southern Connecticut State University, 1989. I was not Muslim until seven years later. Wow. So this journey has been like and profound. I know I'm jumping ahead of the, but I, because I know his biography so well, yeah. you would then later become Imam of his mosque when he left the post to go to Damascus. Yeah, yeah. but I, but I was already his, not okay, we'll, for a year. Well, got anyway. it. We'll, we'll get there, but yeah. I mean, I just, yeah. the way it all comes full circle, I guess. I mean, the person yeah. who was a part of the process yeah. for you to embrace the faith. But even, would, but even before and, that, yeah. I show up six years later on the prayer mat in Damascus, Syria, on the fifth story uh, of a building and look over and say, hey, that looks like Professor Shacker. Mm -hmm. uh, what would he be doing here? You know, and just kind of carried on my business. And that's how we were, re we were reacquainted, you know. Wow. So, yeah, that was, that was so we, I got to spend four years yeah. with him during, during my time. And, in Damascus. And, in Damascus. Right. So, yeah. sorry, let's go back. So, South Africa, then yep. you, you take the Shahada yep. there. And yep. then you, yep. do you just say, okay, you know what, fashion, obviously I'm out. Uh, I hung on a little okay. bit because yeah. I had obligations. I yeah, had yeah, a, an apartment. I was living in London and I had an apartment in, in South Africa. And, okay. and just needed to, to, to continue to, to, to fulfill those obligations. Yeah. And I was under contract there. And right. I thought it was the right thing to do to, to, to oblige that. But it was weird. Like and most South Africa has its own very unique, yeah. and we've had Dr. Yeah. Munir Farid on. Yeah. We've, had, we've had Dr. Ibrahim Musa. Yeah. So they both shared, the, you know, we've talked a lot about sort of the Muslim community there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So listeners can kind of go back and check that out. But I mean, in fact, like really interesting dynamic of the Muslim community, yeah. where they, how they fit into the whole, you know, right. apartheid and racial right. dynamic. Right. right. Uh, which is really interesting because mostly. I lived, I lived like in this iron gated community, mm -hmm. which, which at times seemed very like, um, obviously oppressive and, and, it, and it contained people but what it also did is it forced them to actually have community because like you couldn't come out as a as a as a you know what I mean right, uh, right. as a brown you know the, cat, the colored sorry yeah, color, color, right. as a colored yeah, yeah. you know you couldn't come out of that area so actually you were forced wow. to, to, to build so the really tight knit community that I experienced when I was there I kind of um, you know it, it was great because it's not de facto it's, I mean it was very it's you know in terms of the apartheid is very I mean you're behind walls. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. So this is what, 80, yeah. you said late, no. This is like, this is 96. 96 now. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then you take, so yeah. you take shot in 96. Take the shot in 96. Okay. Um, hang out in South Africa for a few more months. Uh, come back to the States. Okay. Um, you know, uh, How, any sort of family dynamic that played in? No, you it? know, people were cool. I think my okay. cousin really, you know, he came in and was kind of like paved the he, way. Yeah, exactly. Sense, yeah, yeah. He just he he really you know blazed the path and got and got a, got the ground ready for my landing. I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? And my mother even said something like, "I I expected or I, I expected or something like mm -hmm. this when I called her from South Africa." Or, you yeah. know. Um, so so yeah, and then and. Um, so that that take the shahada, come back, uh -huh. and alhamdulillah, I'm blessed in that first year to to actually make Hajj. Uh -huh. And in my first year of being Muslim, like the anniversary shahada anniversary, whatever you people call yeah. it, um, <laughs> I'm like in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's masjid is Juma. Wow. I'm kind of like it, it was just uh, you this know, is Hajj. This is ninety six, ninety seven, ninety seven. Okay. Yeah, so you yeah. didn't go with like Osama. No, but like I met him. Group. No, but okay. I met him like yeah, yeah. another time. Yeah, we get that right, right? I just because yeah. they talk about that Hajj, that yeah. significant with Sheikh Hamza. That no, I think that was no. ninety six. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what was that experience like for you doing Hajj so so soon? It after. was it was incredible aesthetically. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there was just so much I didn't know. You know, I knew like salam alaikum wa alaikum salam, you know? <laughs> like the extent of it, and you had to pray five times a day. You know, it's like, wow. but 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 aesthetically, it was incredible. And the Kaaba was a lot different. You could walk down to the well of Zamzam. You could be on the roof looking down into the Kaaba, so you would just see these. It was really incredible. Was when when Tawaf would happen, and you'd see like these ethnic groups kind of make their way into the Tawaf, and how they would protect their women, and yeah. how it was incredible to see. First, the Africans would come in, and yeah. you'd see like the Malaysians come in, the Turks, pull, the, Turks yeah, yeah, yeah. the Indonesians and their dress and everything mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. indicate who they were. But just seeing this, you know, it was like the incredible, like the most, like the best merge of like traffic that you'd ever, you know, mm -hmm. that you'd ever, that you'd ever see. Um, and just to keep absorbing that amount of people. So again, just aesthetically, it was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a great question, especially very timely in the sense that 
had just finished, and a yeah. lot of people uh, I know personally, and I imagine you as well, Imam Dawood, mm-hmm. have literally came back yesterday. You yeah. Know, a lot of people from yeah. the States yeah. you know, were on the trip. Yeah. Um, I imagine, I know right here at Zaytuna, Diane is on Diane, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Safir. Safir, yeah. 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 And, and also we, one of our students. He just we, we have a new phenomenon these days, which is the, the, the Kaaba selfie. I oh, know. And I just sort of look at that and I say, well, it's a sign of the times, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. It's painful. It's painful. And we're, we're sitting here recording earshot, probably from like Sheikh Hamza's office, but he, he he has a thing on that, and which is uh, yeah. Oh, I haven't. I, yeah, if you go, yeah, I'm sure you can catch a clip of it online. But yeah, just talking about the selfie in front of the Kaaba. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, right. So you were saying aesthetically, it was that, but yeah, yeah. I almost yeah. feel like you're. Maybe there, there, but there are other parts of it that were yeah definitely maybe, but I think for me I think for me like I said like not being able to understand mm-hmm. okay. like like the supplicate like want like the supplication that was caught, like inspiring this person to, yeah. to to bring them to tears for example we, right. and, and and just a short while after of it being in Damascus I was able to make Umrah right so then I had that experience where now I could understand the language and I could understand what was happening so that was that was really that was that was really profound but I think for me really it was um, it 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 it, it there was a lot that happened. There was a fire that year. It was a major fire that year. And it was the year when they actually had then switched over to the fire retardant tents the year after that. So yeah. there was a major fire in Mina. Like three quarters of Mina burnt down yep. the year that I was there. And I got separated from my group for a couple of days and, you know, didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. But I was supposed to be like cutting my hair. I was supposed to be like stoning. <laughs> I was supposed to be like making two off. So it was really, it was really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Fast. Uh, and so now you come back, and then you yeah, I come back to the states. Decide to go to uh, decide to go to uh, well, the group Damascus. that I was with, oh. yeah, they were majority Syrians okay. um, out of the masjid that I that I that I kind of made made my Hajj with, and, and I came home, and there was another brother, um, mashallah, I still remain in touch with a brother. His name was Abdul Latif, uh, and they said, look, Abdul Latif, we visited this school in Damascus, and he's going to go to school there. It, would you like to go? And, and and I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds sounds great. You know what I mean? And and, and I just like I, I just felt like I I'd met so many people in the modeling industry that were Muslim that like I, I said, look, if I'm gonna accept, if I'm gonna if I, if I've now accepted this thing, I want to know what it is for myself. And that was really the the, 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 the that what why I wanted to go to Damascus to study. Like, I want to know what Islam is. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to read the Quran. Like. I want to be able to to, right. to, to engage. So that's what I, I kind of left with that intention. So came home basically from Hajj. Um, it was like July that year, I think it was, or something like this. Or No, it was like April. But what it was, I actually had I'd done the whole like four-month Tablik Jamaat thing, man. I put a backpack on. I went to India and Pakistan by wow. myself, man. And just like, and, 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 and Philistine. I went to went to Laksa um, and spent two weeks there by myself. With the Tablik Jamaat. Yeah. Yeah, but in those areas, like that area is like kind of by yourself, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind yeah. of, you meet people that yeah. could house you and stuff like that. But yeah, I did that for for, for the remainder of the time. <laughs> I did. Was that when you got back that you got exposed to the Tablik Jamaat? Uh, no, because I think, you know, the... the, the in Connecticut? Or? Yeah, like, oh, you know what yeah. I mean? The, uh, the, uh, the uh, no, not in Connecticut, in yeah. kind of the, 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 the Massachusetts area that we yeah. were in, you know yeah. what I mean? There were a lot of brothers, a lot of converts, mm. uh, older... Who had, who had older kind of F- yeah, who gravitated had, towards yeah. that. And it was, you know, Tabarak Allah, yeah, I benefited yes. tremendously. And I think that's what put the desire in me to actually to study, was sitting and reading and hearing about these stories of, that's right. of you the know, companions. The, the, yeah, the, the, the Fadl Talib al Ilm, for example. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, the, right. the, the benefits of seeking yeah. knowledge. And so it was, it was, it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. That's right. So, Syria, I guess, what, what, was, what was Syria? So, you, you yeah. uh, go back to that rooftop story with. Professor Sh- Sh- yeah, Sh- yeah, 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 yeah. So we're in the uh, we're in the we're in the prayer hall, and uh, it's like you know, like my third day or something like that. And classes are beginning to start, and people are coming in, and 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 like I said, I just kind of look to my look to my right, and I see this this man, and he looks like this man who had just taught me this class, and uh, you know, a few years ago in Connecticut. But I just said to myself, like, what would he be doing here, you know? And just continued on my prayer. Then it was interesting because then afterwards, I, I went to some of the students that were there, and I said, Excuse, yeah, I said, yeah, like, you know, you know the brother that was just praying over there, like, yeah. I said, is is his name uh, Shaker? Is it? They're like, oh, you don't know Imam Zaid. You don't know Imam Zaid. 
I'm like, yeah, I know the brother. You know? <laughs> There's all that. Right? So, so, yeah. so, so then, yeah, this went down. It was really interesting because, because actually, I had like a like a big beard and like you know. You had just come back from India, Pakistan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so then I'm like, I kind of come up to him. I'm like, so I like, I go to someone like, do you remember me? And he's kind of like. You know, he does that, like, yeah. And he, <laughs> <laughs> so he's just like, you know. So then I'm just like, you know, mashallah, I introduced myself. And, and, um, and yeah, and like I said, we just, we, we really, we, we, we were together for like four, four years, wow. you know, almost every day. Wow, amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you've heard. Yeah, we had him, we, we, were, we had the honor of having Mam Zaid on the, the night after, or the morning after the, the night where they announced the, that Zaytuna College was... Um, um, was yeah, accredited. Uh, accredited. accredited, so yeah. here we are. You know, it's kind yeah. Of, yeah. That tapestry, Zaki, that uh-huh. you, you always great. talk about. Yeah. Here we, here we go yeah. again. Yeah. Adding another. We're still weaving. Uh, weaving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Syria was Syria was incredible. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I found myself in in, in many situations where, um, uh, you know, kind of, um, um, you know, didn't have a lot of plan prep that went into it. Meaning, like, you know. It, didn't sit around for a long time and think about it. It's kind of like, hey, study Islam in Syria? Sounds like a great adventure. I'd like to try it. Right. And and actually, that's really what it was. I came mm-hmm. home, asked my mother, are you okay with that? You know, put my laundry in and took it out of the dryer and stuffed it right back in the backpack and headed out, you know, after wow. she had said it was okay. Um, but, you know, that's... that's being there, it was it was. I didn't even know. Like, I didn't know the the, the history because like, I'm 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 a Muslim just That's a right. year and a, and a few months. And, like right. I didn't know the history of like the seat of Damascus and what it represented. And I'm just kind of walking around like, wow, this is pretty incredible. The scholarly tradition, yeah. obviously. That yeah. comes from and what yeah. I really I remember this, you know, my my naivety. I was like, but I really love their president here, man. You know, his like picture is everywhere. It's on every building, man. And look at mm-hmm. it. It's like. 25 feet by like 15 feet wide. Love him, you know. And he's a half of the Quran because his name's half of the, Like that's where I was at. You know wow. what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's 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 the, yeah. But 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 again, I mean, we tr- benefited tremendously from 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 the people that bless them mm-hmm. and bless that land and bring mm-hmm. ease and and, I mean, and, yeah. and 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 stability. And all and all of that, um, you know, through the wisdom that of, of, of what he has uh, unfolded here. But but I was just speaking. Actually, I just came back from Houston the other day, and the taxi driver was from Damascus. I mean, the Uber driver. Yeah. So when he landed back here. Yeah. yeah. So it was a really interesting conversation about about Damascus, and you know, you couldn't believe that I learned Arabic there, and he said it's so difficult, and you know, and yeah. and, and, and I said, no, oh, come on. If I can do it, anybody can. You mm-hmm. know? And, but uh, it was just, I really, like I said, we always say, like I really benefited from the people of Damascus. Not only just their knowledge, but also in, like their comportment. Like, mm-hmm. just like incredible human beings. Mm-hmm. I mean, remember like being a student there, people know that you're a student at Ramadan, they know that you're 20 something years old, living single, and they like knock on your door, and then like the proverbial, like, who's there? You open it up, and there's a big tray of food. Mm-hmm. You know, just like every Syrian dish that you could ever ever like want to cook would be like on this tray and you just wouldn't have an idea of like who sent it to you and you would just put the tray it was understood that you just put the tray back out of your door and you'd come back and it would be gone you know and people would just not you would just not know who would do that you know it would happen multiple times for us you know it's just it's just incredible incredible beautiful yeah i've never had the uh, unfortunately never had the occasion to go to syria uh but uh, like you said once Inshallah, uh, stability returns. You know, we can we can we can go to the land of Damascus. Um, so you were there how many years? Four years. You said. Yeah, four, yeah. four, and we went back for probably about eight months. And so you were there, person. obviously, then when nine eleven happens as well. Just we had just come back. Because if you're along the around, because Imam Zaid tells so, his story about yeah, how he, yeah, he was we, there we were, when we he got were, the news. Yeah, what happened was my my wife and and, Dr. and, and, Imam, and Imam Zaid were in the same class there. So they, they had just graduated that summer. Okay. Um, they you finished meet your their wife classes. there? Yeah, we did. Yeah, oh, okay. Mom Zay actually hooked it up. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> so know, she was yeah, a student there. She was a student there. Yeah, yeah, she was a student there. Uh, she's actually from here. She's That's from, right. She grew, up, she grew up here and uh, and went there to study and spent nine years there. But 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 we had just come home that August. Like, she had, she had just, you know, you know finished um, her degree and we thought we were going to take a little break. 
Um, actually, she had just yeah finished some studies that we had outside of the cause. Well, too, we're gonna take a little break. We're planning to stay like longer, mm. you know, maybe another five years. Like you know, um, and we got back on like August twenty eighth or something like this. And back to the states. Yeah, yeah. So we were only here for not even two weeks, and then you know, okay. like post fudger, like hey, this is thing going on you know so that was a game changer you know and that we got asked our teachers and asked our parents and you know what they thought and, and actually we were pregnant my wife was pregnant with our first child at that time so we just said look it's it's a wrap you know yeah you know shut it down you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll go back we'll spend a few months there we'll get our we'll get our stuff and then we'll and then we'll come back and mm-hmm. ship all our stuff back wow, wow. yeah yeah so that's that's so, so i mean how do you Contextualize that. I mean, you, you you mentioned sort of being in Syria and sort of your own naivete. Yeah. yeah. And then this, you've been Muslim for about five years. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What, what is your? How do you process yeah. it? Yeah. I, I I can't. I mean, literally, like I can't. And and um, you know, I, I I studied political science, so I, I I know geopolitically like what's happening, but I can't I can't make sense. I can't make heads or tails of this thing. And 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 and. You know, it, I just remember, I remember walking out to Salat al of the, of the, of the apartment building that we were, we were, we were in, we were in, we were in, uh, in, in Rhode Island. We were in a, in, 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 in an urban, okay. an urban neighborhood. But I just remember it was almost like apocalyptic. Like there was no hmm. one on the streets, you know, and it was almost like it felt like all the eyes were looking out of the apartment buildings at you. And it was only like a block and a half that you had to walk from the apartment that we were in mm. to the masjid, but it just it seemed like a long, a much longer walk than it was, mm. and it just like I said, it was just it was it was eerily mm. like empty, mm. and, and that was really that was that was that was that was that was that was strange, that was strange. So yeah, but but again, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't I couldn't understand I could I couldn't like I said I couldn't make something I couldn't reference something that again that politically that had. Or transpired, yeah. or so it just didn't. It just wasn't adding up. You know, like what's what's going on? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how most everyone was feeling. So I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're you're summing up uh, the collective reaction. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Muslim or non-Muslim. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, and then, so now, are you back in Connecticut? This is where your your tenure at Masjid al Islam. No, so okay. we, so we, um, yes, yes, I'm sorry, so coming sure. back from Damascus, yeah. but that was the, the when 9-11 happened, we were only, yeah, we, we, we were here thinking that it was just going to be a short break, and then, and then we go back to Damascus for some time, and then, uh, Imam Zaid, in between our time of leaving the States to go back to Damascus, he comes back, mm-hmm. and now he's back in Masjid Islam, he's the Imam, and then we had actually laid all of this out prior to leaving. Was um, I was going to return back to Masjid Islam? I was going to be his naib imam, his assistant imam. And there was a post, um, uh, kind of a secondary um, education project that we were all supposed to be a part of. Him, my myself, my wife, we were all going to okay. be, be a part of this. Um, uh, so we were part of that for about a year and a half. It didn't it didn't pan out. Obviously, yeah. Imam Zaid then decides to right. leave. And he go talks to about him. how the community yeah. had kind of shifted and changed yeah. I mean, in the years that he had. In his since he had left yeah, in his absence, yeah, correct? Yeah, and right. so we kind of walked into that, and then yeah. and then he 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 announces that he's leaving for 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 Zaytuna. for the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then um, and then uh, I I I assume the mantle, I guess, mm. uh, reluctantly, and actually under his command, so to speak. But you know, I really didn't want to, and didn't think, "Who am I? I'm not prepared. I've just been Muslim, like you know, <laughs> still wet behind the ears, so to speak." Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. and I've got a ton of studying that I need to do. And how can I become an imam? So yeah, but anyway, there you are. You know, yeah, yeah. there you are. And so, how long were you were you there? Uh, we stayed there for four years. Oh, okay, so another yeah. four years. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, are you are you studying, going back to school? Because I know Dartmouth comes into the picture. Yeah. No, yeah. I was. Um, you know, I, 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 I was at that time had a, had a degree that hadn't been finished yet in undergrad, okay. but I think I was, um, I was listening to, to, to some, some, some wrong advice, you know, mm-hmm. Hey, you've got this Islamic education now. It's pretty much all you'll need. Oh, you wow. know, okay. life will be great for you. And you know, the world's going to unfold at your feet and, you know, and uh, yeah, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I bought into that rhetoric. Okay. Um, and didn't 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 pursue my my degree at that time and um, 
uh, finishing up the, the undergraduate degree that Correct. I studied. Um, but alhamdulillah, you know, I came to my senses and, um, you know, I realized that not everyone wants to sit in the masjid and study Islamic texts with you. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, you know, went back and 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 um, um, actually finished finished up finished up my, my undergraduate degree at a, at, a, at a program that allowed me to, to do it online because I only had a few few courses right. that I needed to to okay. to, uh, to, to to finish. So you could do it like remotely. You yeah, remotely. Exactly. You were. Yeah. You were at that time still. In I was actually in Dubai. Oh, okay. Yeah, this yeah. Is so, so, so then after oh, my four here. years yeah. of, uh, of 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 being in Islam, yeah, yeah, I like we get this offer from like Habib Ali to come work at the Tabla project. You were at the Tabla project. I was, yeah, yeah. Oh. I was at the Darazid. That's what the the project was for the Darazid. Okay, I was there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so we were there. Our so, mutual friend Kamran Baj was there. That's where I met Kamran. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's wow. Because okay. he was on the board at that time. Yes, yes, so, sir. So, yeah, yes, we, sir. We, we meet in that context. Yeah, um, part and of that then, same tapestry again, my yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you were at Tabla. Okay, and you're in double. Uh, yeah, you're in. Yeah. Dubai, no, Dubai, yeah. Dubai. I would say it was in Al Ain. Yeah, that's, that's right. where the project was. That's it was right. in Al Ain, mm -hmm. and then Al Ain, um, you know, d d d you know, Dubai was just like the sirens. They were just calling me. You know what I mean? And, and my hands were tied. Was and Mustafa they, there too? He was. At this time? Right. Yeah, Mustafa, Mustafa was Davis. there, and yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Walid and yeah, uh, yeah whole crew. Yeah, whole crew. I, I mentioned Musa also because we he was on the show as well. Right. So. Right. Uh, and uh, okay, so uh, and you're there how long then? Three years. Three years. Ago. Yeah, yeah, and then I come uh -huh. back to the states. Okay. Now I come back to the states like, um, you know, um, need to finish, fin yeah, yeah. Finish, up, finish up that degree. But then I'm like, I still want to keep studying, you know. Yeah. Oh, and so I look at a friend recommends a. Perhaps uh, I was interested in education. Um, I got invited to like the minority recruitment or what do they call it? The, yeah, 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 minority recruitment or something like that at the Harvard School of Education. Yeah. So I went to um, minority outreach or whatever. Yeah, yeah what it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but with recruiting, yeah. Okay. yeah, so I went there for a weekend. Oh, Seemed pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know if that's what I wanted to do. Checked out Yale, kick the tires in their environmental project, master's program. Mm. But just, I don't know, I just. Where I'm at, I just I wasn't looking to take that amount of debt. I was just going to keep it real with you. Like I just wasn't. It was a time, like I don't. Just wasn't looking to take that much debt. And then the Dartmouth job came up. So Dartmouth came up, and you and, were a chaplain. And, and I was a chaplain, but you could also, um, you know, you would you would have, they were a, they allowed you to to study for your masters as well. Right. And, and it was like you know your your tuition was like commensurate to your full time enrollment. You know, as an employee, like the percentage that you pay. Perfect. So I was like, this is a great opportunity to work great. and to be able to fulfill a master's degree uh, at the same time. Without incurring that debt. Without incurring that debt. Yeah, so alhamdulillah, I was able to do that. And you did your master's in? Uh, globalization studies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, globalization studies. Which, when did you finish that? Uh, I just finished uh, yeah. this year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it was, that was a long, yeah. like... I can't do this. Like we just had a kid, or like you know, like all these things. Like that whole, I'm, I'm that whole. Like I'm not. I can't even do it. Why did I, fit, you know, fake myself out? Like mm -hmm. yeah, just really struggled in terms of like um, having that confidence. You know what I mean? And, and I don't know when and where that happens or how. But if someone does, they can just tell me because it was a, it was a long. That was a, like I did like a PhD like timeline to get a master's done that should have been done in a year and a half hmm. but uh i mean for me though it was really about like again like honestly like the honor of like my, my mother like i wanted to like i wanted to finish that for her you know and and my kids like my father like actually he, he didn't give up mm -hmm. and that's something that i really want to 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 know them to know like manjada yeah, the one who you. exerts themselves right. you will you will you will get it you'll yeah. find those openings so yeah. that was really Motivated me. It was, it was really interesting. My wife too, because she was like, "Give up? You ain't giving. <laughs> like, we, we gave up too much. You ain't giving up." You know, so we like, know that, that, yeah. that. We know that kind of encouragement. Yeah, well, so yeah. that was that was the big one as well too. So yeah. Lord love bless them all. And yeah, wife, absolutely. And children, and mother, all of them that help. So them. this gets me to where I think yeah. where I wanted to go also with the yeah. conversation. Um, your 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 thesis. Yeah, uh, a, a topic yeah. near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Um. So. Please, kind of, yeah, talk about it. Yeah, well, that's, this, yeah, this is it's not just a thesis for you. This is a passion project. For yeah, you as well. yeah. So, so a couple of things please. I think. One yeah. is I really appreciated at Dartmouth. They were really like they allowed you to write on like you know ideas that that you thought were important, right? Mm -hmm. And that obviously it passed the academic 
you know standard that they were looking for and, and so forth. So I wanted to write about like um, industrial uh, meat production, like and, and 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 look at it with the ethics and metaphysics of, of Islamic law, like of Islamic uh, sorry of Islamic law, and then the ethics and and metaphysics. Like that's what I was really interested in. You know, and and so like, how do you? You're speaking my language, but let's just see for our listeners. Yeah. Let's unpack that a little. Bit. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so this idea is like, okay, um, we're Muslims, yeah. and we have this, you know, incredible like legal tradition, um, but we also have this standard of ethics, and then this relationship between spirituality and food. Hmm. And, and so that's what I was looking at examining. Like, how do you plug into this, like, industrial meat production? Well, yes, we can fulfill the legal aspect of it, but what about the ethics and the metaphysics? And that's, that's really what I, what, I, what I wrote about. Right. And so when we... But if we were to maybe put that into Quranic language, then yeah. when you talk about ethics and meta, me, me, metaphysics, what are we talking we're about? We're talking about halal and tayyib. tayyib. And we're talking That's about right. the tayyib aspect of it because basically... Because the verse in the Quran yeah. actually yeah. says... Yeah, yeah there's four. There's four. There, there's four, several. Four, like yeah. That. Yeah. Right, there, sorry. You, sorry. Yeah. But no, there's four, there's four mm-hmm. times when the words come, you know, halal and tayyiban. Together. Halal and tayyiban. Eat from which we have provided for you, halal and tayyib. And so my, you know, what I was looking at was that... For me, uh, halal was like the law. Like, this meat is halal, I can eat it. But what does tayyib mean? And, and the fact that it's mentioned here four times, but it's like, it's like we've not forgotten by, it's not it. Accident. You know, yeah, it's, it's not by exactly, accident. Exactly. Right? And you're like, okay, why is, yeah. Like, why don't we ever hear that part of it? Like, is it halal? Like, that's what we always hear, right? Hey, is this meat halal? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I just eat some halal meat. You know, halal cart, halal guys, like whatever, like, right? It's all yeah. this stuff, but it's like, there's a whole other reality that's kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. hey, I'm, already, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm still here. Right. You know now, what I mean? How much of our, how much in the, did you find then in the tradition? I found a lot. Okay, man. I found okay. a lot, and 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 I think you know, it's it's obviously obviously because I think I think what it does is it 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 it, 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 it takes you from the place of like Hassan to Ahsan. Right, so I think it's kind of like people are okay with like, hey, it's Hassan, it's okay, it's not so we're like right. good to excellent, good to excellence, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. But uh-huh. I, but for me, this whole tradition is to push us towards excellent. excellence, and if we're not striving to that, then yeah. you know, the sun shines on you for a day. It should be a day that is better for you than the one that was the last. Mm. You know, and that's mm-hmm. kind of my my idea of this thing, and that's how Correct. I was looking at. It. Like, if we're not striving towards that, then we're just treading water. Right. Grew up on an island. I know. <laughs> I know what treading water feels like, man. You're not going anywhere, and you're exhausting yourself. That's right. That's so right. I feel like you know, and especially when you look at when you get into the Islamic spiritual tradition, uh-huh. that when you begin to look at the correlation between food and, and like in your spirituality, called, quote, quote, spirituality. spirituality it's it's like inseparable and it's like it's like it's like first you know first first principle you know what i mean mm-hmm. make sure one that the wealth in which you purchase it from is from a is from a pure source um and then uh food. you know the the, the 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 food that you eat correct yeah, that it's you from eat pure source it's from a pure source correct. right and so i think even if we talked about kind of like it would go like halal then it would go like your money and then it would go like oh yeah and then this other thing but the other thing that's really interesting is there was a hadith that I came across that was really interesting here, where I think it's Sa'ad ibn Waqqas. He asked the Prophet Islam, Ya Rasulullah, make dua for me that Allah will make my du'as accepted. And he actually uses, what's really interesting, he uses, the, he uses his name. He says, he supplicate for me that God will accept Sa'ad's supplications. Hmm. And he says, and he says, they're also so he's referring, he speaks of himself in third person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is really, because he's is, the one asking the prophet. Exactly. The prophet's interpreter. Which I always think is just, I just, You're just, right. like, I, I, just, I, always, I love that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. uh, the, 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 um, it's like you invite you to dinner, like, hey, when you come, come to Dad Wood's house for dinner. <laughs> it's kind of like a baller, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, right. just, well, we have a president who calls like, himself in a third person. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I didn't but, want to go there. But, but, but we did. Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry, go back. So, sorry. so, so I was, he, I, he we're talking about the puppet yeah, said, yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. Go. So, Saad, he makes okay. this request, and the response is, uh, you know, Saad, ensure that your food is tayyib, and Allah will accept your supplications. And that, to me, was like, the big moment where it's not he didn't say halal oh I see right so we can fulfill all we can tick all the boxes yeah. legally yeah the T's right? across the, the T's across the eyes are dotted legally right documents been signed here you go 
but yet you want to move into the next realm, make sure it's Tayyip. Mm-hmm. And so for me, that was the, like, that's where I begin, like, my Tarkis. Like, that's where I begin, mm-hmm. like, to, to concentrate on. No, and what's fascinating, and I can, you know, just as a lawyer and thinking back to, you know, just even Western tradition of uh, legal tradition. And, in fact, I think all legal traditions in some form or fashion wrestle with this idea or the... Uh, the, the tension that exists between law or legality and ethics. And ethics, yeah. Just because yeah. something is illegal, and you know, people hear it all the time, but it doesn't mean yeah. it's ethical. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? And, and I think, so, and I think within side of our community, it's even it, that's even more problematic. It is because, because how could something be hard? It's not the best thing that could ever happen to <laughs> humankind just because it's halal. Well, look at divorce. Divorce is halal, yeah. right? But it doesn't mean it's the, it's, the, it's the most ethical decision that a person will make in a situation such as we see. Correct. Right? And, and, and actually, we see an abuse of it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean it's ethical. It's halal. Right. You know? And, and so anyway, you know, that's... that's and, and again, we, it's like we... At times, I feel like we're not mature enough to have that conversation. Right. You know? So the, this is something, again, that when I talk about this subject, I like to get into, which is that... Well, in our tradition, right? When you, when you looked at the corpus and the material and the body of information, you know, body of the tradition that you were exposed to, mm-hmm. you see a very rich tradition that comes out of like obviously there's a very rich legal tradition, there's a very, mm-hmm. very rich theological tradition. Mm-hmm. Is there maybe not equally, but is there as equal of an emphasis on what we're talking about here, the metaphysics of? Food? Yeah, I think so because because I think the other thing which was well, that has to develop because certainly I think in the or, if you go back to the founding documents as it were or the sources, the prophets spoke about it abundantly. The Quran, like as you mentioned, you've got this whole discourse that connects the two of halal and tayyib. Mm-hmm. But how much of our tradition actually sort of explores it and expounds on it? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is, this is what I thought. And again, these are my own ideas and anyone can just feel free to, 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 to disagree. This is what I came from. Is I feel that, 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 that the kind of the, when one is living in a state of their fitra, so to speak, and allowing other animals I'm talking about here to live in their state of fitra, that all of the things that we're talking about now, about you know the highest level of fitra, sorry, yeah, sorry, kind of like the, 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 the natural disposition of, 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 cre- of creature of creation, creation. exactly, yeah. right? So cows are meant to graze and eat grass. They're not supposed to live in their own, you know, waste and eat grains and be injected with antibodies and you know, other, like that's not Thank their you. that's right. not their natural state. Okay. Right. Right. So, so what I feel is that um, that that a lot of material was not there because it was it was there was no need to mention the ah, obvious. Got it. Right. I can't think of. I mean, you come across like right. just insanity, right? So you get like the mad cow disease, right? Uh-huh. So mad cow disease, uh, uh, two thousand eight. It's no longer legal to feed bovine bovine. Right, because what was happening was that when 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 animals are what's called rendered, right, the rendering of a carcass, it's turned back into feed, and that's where it came from. Bovine was the impact of an of a, of a cow eating a, a, cow, a cow, right? And I think there's even that idea of cannibalism, the impact on the brain, and other stuff like that that happens, right? So what happens is that then um, they begin to grind up. Uh, 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 that uh, uh, carcass yeah. and feed it to chickens because everyone's got to make money off of it and then what happens is when those chickens die they grind those up and who do you think eats it? the cows because you can go now avian bovine but you can't go bovine bovine so now you have bovine avian avian bovine and that brings Insane. it back in 2012 when you have the reoccurrence right. of it now. Yes, that's right. So that's what I'm saying. The legal books weren't thinking like, you know what I mean, in that, you know, in that manner. Who, who, I mean, that's like some Frankenstein like, it is. insanity. That's what I'm saying. Like, they're not talking about it because it's like, look, we know the animals <laughs> live like this, man. <laughs> and when they and do talk about eating what we call najasa, like impurity, they're talking about like the dung. Like they're eating the larvae of chickens are eating the larvae of the dung of some cow patty. Can we eat him? You know, after he's eaten from yeah. that, which is legally yeah. right uh, With, considered filth. Correct. Right. That's that's, that's like, what they're talking. That's what about. they're talking about. They're not talking, they're not about. talking about industrial, like in Frankenstein. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, it's because, and I say this only, and I don't mean to, this isn't to make light of what you're talking about, but I think 
I couldn't help but my mind went to like the Simpsons reference. Right. Right. So you've got, and it's the end. I think it's the same episode where Lisa, I don't know if you have yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lisa turns vegetarian. Yeah. And that's the Bovine University uh, <laughs> episode. That's right. where he's like, I want to go. To when I grow up, I'm going to Bovine University. Yeah. <laughs> but do you remember the food chart? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm, when he's talking, when Imam Doug was talking about what he was talking about, I thought of the food chart. D- describe the food chart as best you can. I mean, I don't remember the, the, the but it was like the horse. I think there was a picture of the horse. <laughs> And then it basically, you know, you've got arrows pointing to all the people that, you know, all the byproducts and animals eat it and the snake and it becomes a shoe and you just, exactly what you're talking yeah. about, which is this, are you, are you I'm, I'm saying, well, well, we'll take a minute and do it yeah, because I think it's so poignant of a sort of a social commentary, which the best Simpsons episodes kind of do that, right? Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. watch yeah. the Simpsons when, they, when it was good. Uh, the kind of social commentary, but sorry. So, the, but that's what you're talking about when you talk about Faya. Yes. And ha- now, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. It? Okay. Yeah. Here's the thing. You know, you get yeah. that cow yeah. at the auction, Ahmed. I'm using. This, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> a name, <laughs> and you Bismillah Allah Akbar, yeah. and you put the halalness on him. Right. And now it's all great, and we comes out of the oven, and it. But again, it met the legal standard of it. Did it meet the ethical standard of it? And by not meeting the ethical standard, if it did not, then are we blocking ourselves from the metaphysical realities that exist? When the Prophet says, "Eat from the tayyib, and your supplications will be accepted," and then we ask, like, "Hey, why? Are, why are we praying for all this stuff and nothing happens?" I mean, mm-hmm. Really, mm-hmm. like, you don't really. That's a rhetorical question, right? Yeah, you're, 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 you're teasing me, right? Mm-hmm. Come on, because look at what we're eating. Because look at what we're eating. Uh, so, so that's one aspect. Yeah, 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 right. The second aspect of it is, is another had the exact yeah. is the treatment of, of the, the animals. animals. The that has a walks by, exactly. He walks or, by sorry, this, implications. this 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 animal uh-huh. and he says it's like sickly. It's emaciated, yeah. he says, he describes it, its ribs are, st- are protruding, its back is sunken in, and he said it just, it looks weakened. Mm-hmm. And he says to them, it uh, you know, he says, he says, fear Allah with regard to this dumb animal. Now it's interesting, because dumb here is that it can't, can't speak. speak. It can't tell you of the hardships that it's enduring. And he says, fear that, ride them when they're healthy and eat them when they're healthy. So now you have the whole treatment of the animals, right? right? So now, um, going back to that place, so not only it's 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 the state of that animal at the time of the slaughter, it's the state of the animal that brought it up to the time of the slaughter that we're also concerned ourselves with if we are who we claim we are and following the prophetic tradition. Wow. That's right. Hmm. That's right. And the other thing was really deep for me, yeah. and I never thought about yeah, it in this yeah. context, was... You know, it, when you read law, it, it tells you that, like, when you get to the Kaaba, that the first thing you do is you you, 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 you secure your luggage. And I thought, well, that's odd, right? You're at the house of God. And the first thing you're telling me to do from the legal standard is to, like, secure my luggage. Right. I'm like, shouldn't I, like, run to the Kaaba and, like, make will do and pray to rock odds, right? But then I was like, subhanAllah, it's so amazing. They were saying that it's to give the animals rest. Because wow. the packs that they would have had to not. carry to carry you there, if you would have left your contents on the pack animal, and by the time you used the restroom and washed up for prayer and went into the Kaaba and paid your two rakats and made tawaf and drank your zams, it's standing in the hot sun with all the luggage on the back. And I thought, my God, that's so amazing our tradition is when we follow it. It's so amazing. That's right. And then that could even extend it to the drivers. Mm-hmm. Right? Let them park the bus and go sleep, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. You know, don't hang around trying to, like, well, leave my luggage here and stuff. So anyway, it was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. No, because, I mean, you know, because these are conversations we have around the dinner table, which is, you know, you like the kids, like getting my kids to appreciate, right, th- that th- there's a whole process, man, of how that, you know, you talk, you, you talk from farm to plate. What you're talking about is... We're not even on the farm yet. We're, yeah. You're going back to the, you know, and yeah. that's where 
sort of Muslim tradition begins yeah, in terms yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they look they, like they, the soul they, to the place exactly <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I mean at. so tradition is informing us of something beyond, beyond. this form to play right. like you said soul and to play that's what of, my mm. brother I love who's also writing on this at Harvard Nuri Freelander and his wife when they have the website Beyond Halal because that's what it is it's to bring us beyond halal to be website, yeah. beyond the legal standard mm. right because that's going to get you, like, you're not going to go to, you're not going to be like, oh, mashallah, but I'm so glad you got to see it and call it, like, in that's right. school. And that's what we're doing. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. like the, the, you, can, you can skate around the law where it's going to get you at a C in terms of, our, in terms of it being halal, hmm. you know? No, we, we, we wouldn't accept that for your engineering degree, so why would we accept it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man? Mm-hmm. That's, where, that's like how mm-hmm. I look at this thing. Mm-hmm. So, I know you're, so you're, this kind of lends into, and, and, and for the sake of time, I, yeah. mean, I, I want to kind of move yeah. the conversation along as well. Yeah. I could literally talk to you for hours. About this. <laughs> this is a passion thing for me as well. Cool. But hunting and, and, yeah. and talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we'd be remiss not to, to have you on the yeah. show and not talk about your little hunting exertions. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. So get your what is it? Get your halal. Yeah, get your own. Get your own halal. Get your own halal. Yeah. Hashtag so get like, your own halal. Yeah. Hashtag right. get your own halal. <laughs> Because because my thing is that you know I hear a lot of people also like complaining right like oh the meat's so bad and you know it's so horrible and this that and the third so I'm like okay great like level one for me is like befriend a farmer man you know what I mean like that builds creates allyships with people that are you know you know if you're gonna eat meat I feel like you have to involve yourself in this process man mm. you know you can't be like you know eat meat like absent you know absent consumer and just bring it to me. And so, what I feel is like we should have a relationship with our with with with, with our with our with our food. So one level is like I'm encouraging people like go find a farmer and involve okay. yourself in this process, man. Involve your children in this process and let mm-hmm. them know. Perhaps that will reduce our consumption patterns, like, like an impact when you actually see what happens. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I think especially uh, living in California where. You know, supposedly, again, you, know, you yeah. walk into a supermarket, organic, yeah. line in the shelves, yeah. Yeah. the meat is supposedly, you know, hand cut, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. farm, yeah. what is it, a, a free, you know, free, free range, range and yeah. farm raised and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> again, you're saying take it beyond that. Yeah, because, yeah. because you know, my, 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 my thought is, when, you know, when you involve yourself in that process, then now I don't, now I have, it's like, it's like, you know, when Allah talks about like Ayn al in the Quran, like like I have Ayn, like I have certainty that I, like I have visual certainty. So it's seeing is believing. Right? Seeing is believing, right? I saw that thing, you know, grazing on that grass. I saw that thing handled beautifully when it was brought forward. And I saw how it was, you know, its its life was 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 taken, taken. you know, through a process of which has is traced back prophetically for us. That's right. And so, and so, um, to me, that's where I lay comfortable. Now, what I also want to say is that, like, if you're at Masjid so and so, or you know, in like, hey, we've got forty acres, and like those deer are just eating, you know, everything around here, or they're a nuisance, or they're afraid, we're, gonna, we're afraid they're going to run the kids over. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, get a bow, get your own Allah. You know what I mean? Because now, I'm just looking at like, 50 pounds, 70 pounds, 80 pounds of like, free, pro, like, incredible protein that I can feed my family for, man. Like, that's, 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 that's right. where I'm at in this thing. You know? yeah. That's one. You're looking Two at is, good venison. Exactly. <laughs> Two is, you know, I was in Medina, I was in Rehla, I was in a, uh, one year, yeah. and one of the scholars, or one of the tour, they, they took us, one of the historians of Medina took us out. And he ah. took us to a place that was like, he said, this is a place where the Prophet Islam would take this, would this, go with the Sahaba, and they would swim, and they would hunt gazelle. And they were like, and obviously the Prophet Islam's bow is in top company, you know, yeah, yeah, in the museum. museum, and inshallah, I hope to see it one day. Um, but I'm just like, man, like that's a, like like that's to me a sunnah that I want to revive and have in my life. Mm-hmm. I want to be a person that will follow in that prophetic example of hunting with a bow. Food. Yeah, hunting with a bow. That's right. Right, exclusively with yeah. a bow. And and so and there's all other things that kind of generationally. And my I told you my 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 great grandfather. My grandfather apparently was an incredible hunter. Wow. Uh, you know, I've got a really incredible picture of him and some of his. Some of his friends, and you know, they've got you know, they're, 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 there's their pipe and their caps on and their vests and ties and their beagles and then a whole bunch of rabbits that are lined up. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. it, 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 there are people that are white, that are black in the photo. It's just it's really it's really incredible. You know, this is happening. This is like 1920s, 30s. Mm-hmm. You know, Nantucket Island, man. Right. 
you know. It's yeah, not too long ago. In terms of when we when we talk, when we talk when we talk about you know even you know in the subcontinent where we're from, I mean you know the, the idea of you know uh, raise, grazing yeah yeah rearing your own animals yeah, and then yeah, exactly. being on the land exactly. and then you cutting you yeah. know, you hunt you know you yeah. slaughtering them right yeah. there yeah. and then you know. And here's, eating. here's another thing I'll say that just it's kind of like within our lifetime is what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, exactly. I saw it as a child. Right. So, right. So it can't be that long ago. The other thing that's, <laughs> that's really been cool about hunting is it's just it's exposed me and others to to groups that we probably wouldn't have conversation with. Right. You know what I mean? I've met some really cool people. Yeah. You know so, I mean? so and, and, and maybe one anecdote, which yeah. is the one we were talking about off air. So. Uh, I know you've turned Osama Cannon on, who was yeah. a past guest of the show. Yeah. Uh, you've turned Osama on, and you guys go on these hunting excursions, yeah. and you've turned him on yeah. also to archery and yeah. uh, hunting with bows. So yeah. um, <laughs> tell us maybe about what was happening, what, November 3rd, 3rd. <laughs> 2016, yeah, so we had where just, you two found yourselves. Yeah, we had, we had flown into to Montana. I had elk hunted there before, yes. actually with Cameron. Uh, ah. And which was really, oh man, we had a great time. And those elk ran circles around us, and it was incredible. Like, you know, they would be like on one side of the river. We would like get these flotation devices and think that we were all smart. And like four a.m., I would like paddle across, doggy paddle across this like river, you know, with my bow on top of this some sort of flotation device. You know, get dressed in the dark over there, and the elk would be on the other side of the river. You know where we just wow. left from. It was just <laughs> so it's a real it's deal, a, man. I'm like, telling you. you know, it, it, so, 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 so. Anyway, we, we didn't get any elk, and uh, and but, oh man, I just got to tell you this. Yeah. First morning, we set up in this place. I mean, we scouted. It. It's I mean, it's picture perfect, man. I'm standing in this drainage ditch. It's like up to my chest. I've got my binoculars out. It's too dark to see. We're there pre-fudger. There's this huge, you know, um, elm tree to, to, to my right uh, cover. And the elk, uh, the lights come on. Like the sun is just enough breaking where you can see. And there's a herd of elk, man. Like three, four hundred yards out from us. And they're just grazing and they're coming right to us. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. This is like dreamlike. No one gets this, but I see oh, big horns, yeah. cow, and you hear them communicating to each other. Some hunter who probably didn't like us being there and thought it was his territory comes up and walks up, exposes himself out in the open, oh, yeah. and the whole herd, it was like comic, it was like cartoonish, man. Yeah. They all like pick their heads up, they all look at him, and they like single file get in a row and like hightail it out of town. And I'm like, Bro, there's enough elk there for like to go around. around right? You know what I mean? Yeah. To go around a couple of days. Anyway, we didn't get any elk yeah. trip with Cameron. And Cameron has a hilarious story too of this cow that he was chasing around a bush with his bow. Would <laughs> you know? <laughs> he couldn't shoot. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, you know, uh, Salma and I, Whitney, we go back there and just have a blast. You know, yeah. we, we 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 get there. We hunt a week um, in, in 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 rural Montana and just. I mean, it was a, it was it was so fun that 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 hunt. We were on the deer, um, you know. We, we 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 both missed. You know, I had a, I had a shot, but it was like you know, like a fifty yard shot. It was uphill. Steve, I'm going to make all kinds of excuses. The wind was blowing in my face. You know, I was hungry. I was fasting. <laughs> sun was in your eyes. Yeah, you know, sun was in my <laughs> eyes. Yeah, you know, I just yeah. been stung by a bee. You know, <laughs> you know, my fingers were numb. I couldn't hold my bow. Okay. All the excuses, right? So I missed my shot, and yeah. and and, and, and is what we did. But yeah, we were there, and. And it's election. Yeah. We come out of this hunt. We didn't get anything, and we're driving back. And it's like you know, it just looks like a it looks like a, an alley oop to LeBron, and he's about to throw it down. Hillary's got it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so we shut the radio off. You know, oh, we wow. come back. Yeah. And we come back, and Whitney gets on like online. He's like, "Yo, this thing's about to get real." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm like, what?" You know what I mean? Yeah. And then and then he's like, he's like, "Yeah." So then we like, um, it's still going on and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to go to sleep. You know what I mean? And then I hear him like rustling around the night and, and he's like, yo, that dude won. <laughs> so like, that's like, like we're in the dark, like in sleeping on the sleeping pads on the floor in this house. Uh, you know what I mean? In in in, in, in rural in in, in, in Montana, right. you know, in our sleeping bags in like the light of his iPad like illuminates and he looks at the percentages and, and just kind of like mumbles over like yo, 
that dude won. You know what I mean? So that's how I found out that you know Trump was a president. So, so. Crazy. But again, that was that was an incredible, incredible time in in Montana, and I hope that we're blessed with 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 with, with more. But um, but yeah, like I said, it's been yeah. it's been great. You know, uh, Tim Burton. Uh, you know, over at um, you know Solo Hunter and and and, and Jason Harris oh, over yeah. at. Uh, <laughs> over at Kuyu and just your people that have been supportive of this journey and um, you know Zach Griffith over at you know ZachGriffith.com what he does over there these guys really you know responded well and, and, and just shown a lot of support you know for, yeah. for, 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 for someone that like it's not coming like it's not like I didn't grow up like tradition my yeah. grand grandfather took me out and it was like I kind of picked the bow up in 2003 by myself because I liked it you know and I've you know done this thing pretty much by myself and, and I think it's a little bit difficult you got this funky name you're like brown you just can't walk up to people's doors and be like you know yeah. hey can I like hunt your thousand acres out in Montana <laughs> you know, <laughs> like other folks can do that yeah. right so but I can't so but these guys have been incredibly supportive and you know we've got you know we, we hit each other back and forth on Instagram and I can ask them questions and so it's been like I said so that side of hunting as well too has been great because we, look I don't want to see I don't no one wants this enmity. No one wants this continued animosity and two camps and you know what I mean? And, and so, you know, probably traditionally these are people that, that, yeah. that, that are intolerable and don't like Muslims and at the same time... Vote Republican or whatever. Republican, exactly. <laughs> Vote Republican and all those other things. Yeah. And, 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 but these people, you yeah. know, have, have, been, have, been, have been really supportive man, mm-hmm. and continue to be. And, and I think that's the area that, like, that's the strength of, of our country. Right. You know, we can be on polar opposites and not be enemies. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what I'm after. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I enjoy about this journey. Just meeting people and breaking down walls and breaking down stereotypes. That's well, powerful. With, man. With, yeah. uh, before we wrap things up, uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on, on your uh, trip to help people. Yeah. Do well, I was going to say, you know, because you, uh, and you could probably maybe talk about what you do here at Zaytuna. Yeah. And then kind of dovetail yeah. that into the conversation yeah. about the trip. So just, I guess I'll take it back a little bit. So yeah. actually, the hire at Dartmouth was 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 twofold. It was. It was the um, what they call it the the, the service and educational um, uh, program. Um, so I was fifty time fifty percent chaplain, fifty percent, but it really was like eighty twenty. You know, I was doing more of the service of stuff. The service was for the entire college. So I had like um, seven trips I was responsible for. Two were international and five were domestic. Um, so my mom's aide had asked me to come to Zaytuna to try and start something like that. Oh, um, oh so when you say trips or. Uh, service, uh, service, service, sorry, service learning trips. Right, yeah. the students, you guys students, take them. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Got it. okay. And, and at Dartmouth, they were big. I mean, we were. Yeah, it was like a ten-year project. Right, Nicaragua. It's, you know, it's. it's they got the funding. Yeah, and the uh, yeah. Yeah. And the the, the, the alumni, uh, yeah. exactly yeah. endowed. Yeah. So so in so in coming here, uh-huh. I was able to, to 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 do that. You know, every student that graduates from Zaytuna has to complete a minimum of fifty um, experiential learning hours, mm. and it's not just like, hey, I'm gonna you know, go to Hawaii and sell coconuts, you know, on the beach. It's like, you know, we have a criteria. Um, It's got to be an underserved community, under-resourced community. Um, It's got to be 60% of what we call direct um, service. So also we don't want you sitting up in an office like, you know, populating spreadsheets. Um, So you could do a part of that, but we really want you to roll your sleeves up. So the past two years, um, I've I've taken our students to Selma, Alabama, and we've worked with a pastor... Um, slept on his floor. I mean, great stuff. I mean, he was 14 years old on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, you know, March 7th when the bridge is stormed. And so you're getting this incredible history. Um, we were able to bring the faculty member this last year. So she teaches U.S. history. So, in, and the thing is, we do reading. So it's not just we just show up. We're reading about what's happening, history, you know, politics, race, all these things for weeks prior to the kids going on the trip. So what happened um, this year with Houston, you know, it was Eid. You know, I'm like, I'm like exhausted, tired. I mean, like the tanks on E. I've, I, I gave the chutbah at like MCC at seven thirty in the morning. That's I'm like right, seeing right. double, yeah. you know, by the afternoon. And I get a call like, "Hey, what do you think about going to Houston tomorrow?" I was like, "Sure, I'd love to." <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, it was so like, who proposed it? Mom Oh, yeah, I Mom Zaid proposed uh-huh. it. So you know, we take a couple of students yeah. and head down there. And for me, yeah, I'm, honestly, I'm like, you know, I learned it from him. I'll be honest with you. I've yeah. learned it from him. Well, like he said, you, you couldn't know. ask for a better teacher in terms yeah. of 
a man who is, mashallah, infatigable, like just tireless. Yeah, exactly. Tireless. Exactly. Mashallah. Exactly. So that's Tasha where, that's, I mean, I mm-hmm. mean, that's, that's, that was it. You yeah. know, there, there, there's, there's, and I've been around it enough where I'm motivated by the ability and the selfishness of like the hadith, which says that Allah is in the assistance of his servant as long as the servant stays in the assistance of his brother. So I like there's a selfish motivation for me too. And so alhamdulillah, you know, a little consultation with the wife and she was fantastic as she is with these things and understanding and knows what it's about and gets it and was like, yeah, bismillah. You know, so we I got two students. Um, we had we had originally we were trying to get thirteen thousand gallons um, to this one community of water, uh, fresh of water, water mm-hmm. of fresh water. Um, um, that ended up being reduced um, to sixty five hundred, and we got it to a hospital. But we can still continue to have trucks um, right. there. But it was just incredible what we found. I mean, uh, again, certain. Parts I mean, so Houston is my hometown, so obviously, I, I mean, for me. All of those streets, and, and I, I'm, I'm connected with friends. That's right. In fact, so, I mean, shout out to one of our listeners. I mean, he always chimes in. Nasser, he lost everything. Yeah. They, they, and there's a uh, GoFundMe. There's a crowd. But yeah, sorry, GoFundMe page. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll put a link in when the episode hits. But uh, yeah, they're trying to raise money for us because he lost everything. Trip, but yeah, there's just, degrees of separation. Right. So, real. so you land so in uh, we where? Hobby? In Dallas. You land? Oh, okay. Because we, we couldn't, yeah, we couldn't land in Dallas. Okay. And that Dallas drive to Beaumont is only two and a half hours, right? Yeah. It took us eight. It took us eight hours. Because of the detours. Because of the detours, the flooding. the flooding. You'd get in the street, we show that so it was open. Beaumont's about, for those who don't know, they're about 45 minutes east of Houston. East of Houston. So yeah. it's where a lot of refineries, it's a very exactly. industrial town. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we had a connection, Mumsy had a connection there. So oh, okay. was in contact with a community that was... There's that a was big message stuff. there. Yeah. Big, yeah. Alhamdulillah, we had an alum, 2016 graduate of Zaytuna, Muhammad, Muhammad Khalid, yeah. who is from Houston and is an imam in Baytown now. So he, mashallah, on a, on a drop of a dime, you know, scrambled, he got a 26-foot U-Haul truck filled up with groceries. We coordinated, we'll meet you there at this time. Wow. Um, we filled up the, 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 the masjid with supplies. We got the water out to people. And what was really incredible was just the, you know, our students were just so savvy. What they were doing was they were going on Twitter and they were looking at these posts and they'd find a post like, hey, I was just on 876 Oregon Ave and there's an elderly woman who's been in her house for two days. She doesn't have electricity. She doesn't have a phone. Can anybody get her some stuff? And we would be like, on it. And we would drive over there and like, you know, unpack water. And then you'd find like her neighbors needed stuff. So it would just... It was like al khair mojood, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Khair mojood, like right. there's goodness, man. There's goodness. And it was You'll incredible, it. man. Yeah. You know, and, and it was just, it was just, it was so. Like I said to my wife, I said, you know, I heard the word God more in three days than I have in like six months being here. You know what I mean? Because it was every, and it was like people again. It was that you know what I mean? The, your, your typical gym bomb. You know That's what right. I mean? Not to not be stereotypical or rude to anybody. It was like no. someone that you think would be like, hey, y'all need to go back to your cut, go back to Africa. You know, as, as, as I said, yeah. you know what I mean? The, the, but those he, stereotypes, he, like the, the 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 rifles in the in the back of the pickup truck, yeah. maybe even a Confederate flag yeah, bumper yeah, yeah, sticker. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they were out there rescuing people. And yeah. and and. Telling you, thank may God bless you in your work and what wow. you're doing. So again, what that the, yeah. the, the, what I my big takeaway was, all of that stuff is politics, man. Mm. It's politics and rhetoric, man. But when it comes down to the essence of who we are, we'll forget all of that. We'll forget all of that. And and you know, Derek Lewis says the MMA. Uh, heavyweight fighter from Houston, mm. he has a story because he was saying rescuing people in his truck and stuff like that. And he said one of the res- people that he came to rescue only had a few things. One of the things he had was a Confederate flag. And he said he kept apologizing. Man, I'm so sorry I got this intro. And Derek's like, look, I ain't, I ain't tripping. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And then his wife, he said, the dude's wife was like slapping him. I told you you shouldn't have brought that with you. you know? But it's this incredible scene, right? But all that stuff goes away. And that was really, to me, it's like, he, like that's, that's big. Yeah. Derek's like, look, I'm, I'm not tripping on that, man. Hmm. And that's how I feel like, again, when yeah. we get to the essence of who we are, right. that's who we are. And, and connecting that's was, with people on that level. Connecting with people on that level, man. Right. It was, and that was what was amazing. We had a guy come to us, truckload of stuff. So-and-so sent me here. Right. He says, he's got a daughter with him. She's probably 16, if I could gauge like that. He says, uh, he comes to me and says, excuse me, sir, but um, big guy. I mean, big guy. Big beard that was down to his baseball hat yeah. fit the part right? Right, right pulls me aside and says excuse me um, I, my daughter she doesn't have uh, her head covered you know can she go in the building and 
wow. and, and help volunteer, he's talking about the masjid. Mm. God bless, man. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, that's, yeah. that's this country, man. Yeah. That's this country. That's what I know, want, and love of this place, man. Mm. Mm. And that's a good yeah. way to, yeah. couldn't think of a better way to wrap up this conversation. Thank yeah. you so much for taking the time to chat with us on this Friday afternoon. That's right. And where can people find you, Mondoit, online, where if they want to engage you, engage yeah. your work? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I guess, you know. The, do, do, I know. Yeah. Don't be shy. And, you know, just, just go <laughs> no, ahead. I guess, I don't know. I, I haven't been on in a while, but really Instagram is where I do uh, put up most of my stuff. You know what I mean? I really, I, I, and I... It's uh, there is some stuff on Facebook. At Dawood Yasin or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Dawood underscore Yasin. Okay. Yeah, that's Instagram. Instagram. That's that's pretty much where everything is. I pretty limited, pretty much limited that. I can't. I I just. I can't. I can't take it. Like I'm just. I forget about stuff. So just keep it simple. Instagram is cool. So. Okay. Great, great. And Pravis, where can people find us? Yeah, that's right. So uh, email questions, comments, feedback. We love it. Uh, it, You can email us at. diffusecongruence at gmail.com or of course on Facebook facebook.com slash diffusecongruence Zucky's got a Twitter uh, well actually I've got news for you yes I changed my Twitter handle well uh, so it is now it. actually legible and readable okay so it's uh, yeah so it's Pervez F. Ahmed so you can hit me up on Twitter there at Pervez F. Ahmed so. there you go look at that and if you're looking for me you can find me at Zucky's Corner the AKIS Corner that's also my Instagram that's also my website just got a dot com you can also see my movie reviews at the Huffington Post, and as well as this podcast and the movie film podcast and the Stealth Theater podcast, lots of podcasts. And uh, we'll be back in just a few short weeks, inshallah, with our next episode of Diffuse Congruence. Thank you to our guest, Imam Do, for joining us. I hope you will come back. Yeah. Once again. I'm, 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 I'm humbled and I'm, I'm, I'm honored and all of that stuff, man. It was yeah. great. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate you for listening, and we hope you'll join us next time. Thank you.